okay so for our next section i'd like to welcome our speakers sakti kanan subramanian and gajpati sakti kanan is as that scrum master at cognizant gajpati is as that and cognizant today both of them would be speaking on the topic automated accessibility testing enabling accessible product delivery to clients without discrimination to know more about them and to see their video interviews please check out the links on the screen now i'd request sakti kanan and gajpati to carry forward this session by sharing their screen yep hi this is shakti and uh, i'm from cognizant and uh, kind of like uh, experienced for 13 years and uh, i'm an sdet in uh, cognizant i work at london and uh, kind of like providing solutions to my um, clients in various types of testing and providing the test strategy and stuff like that um and joining with mr uh, gajapati with me and he is also uh, working with me and okay. yeah thanks shakti yeah hi uh, i am gajapati and i have total years of experience in cognizant and uh, uh, at the moment i'm working as as dead role and i have experience in automation testing manual testing and uh, accessibility testing and performance testing so yeah so there is pretty much uh, about myself and yeah over to shakti slide show just a minute technical glitch yeah so uh, today we will be talking about uh, automated accessibility testing why do we need automated accessibility testing how did we achieve how can we achieve this automated accessibility testing and what is the benefit out of that what is the benefit to the organization what is the benefit to our clients what is the benefit to the uh, entire society and stuff like that um so let's go with the intro uh did anyone uh, have any uh, doubt on the previous slide i was explaining about accessibility testing in the previous slide did we no because it was completely blank uh this is how the accessible users are seeing our websites this is how we are explaining about our web website this is how we give the opportunity to our accessible users um about our websites and stuff like that they see nothing they hear nothing they do we are not providing them an equal access like how we give to the uh, regular customers so uh, accessibility is kind of like uh, um kind of like some solution that we give to everyone without discriminating so if you think about this discrimination in different countries we have this dis uh, discrimination act let's say in uk we have a discrimination act says that act 2010 and in india we have an article 14 and in us we have a separate act uh, 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 for act on discrimination so what does this discrimination uh, means that you are enabling some users to access your websites and your apps but you are not enabling others to access your websites and apps that's 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 kind of like discriminating we are not allowing them to use our website they are not we are not allowing them to place some orders we are not allowing them to see what is there we are not allowing them to access what is there so that's that's a discrimination so how can we uh, it, it's kind of a risk to the uh, organization as well because there is an act where you'll have to act on that uh to to come out of that uh, issues and stuffs like that else service you will be sued uh, saying that uh, you are discriminating people so discrimination is is not good so uh, we have to give the equal opportunity to everyone that's why uh, we wanted to keep our website in an accessible state accessibility is not only for kind of like a specific uh, 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 group let's say uh, there is someone uh, um, uh, physically uh, un unable or is kind of like there is someone who is like visually challenged uh, maybe he is having some uh, issues with um, uh, he might be having issues like dyslexia he or she might be having issues like color, color blindness and stuffs like that uh in that case we have to give uh, uh we uh, we have to develop our software or a website or an app in in such a way that everyone can access it uh, without any issues and stuffs like that so uh, to make sure uh, the website is developed with all those accessibility rules and stuffs like that uh, we'll have to make sure uh, 
uh, that is tested uh, against the accessibility um, kind of like rules and what are all the procedures that need to follow to make our website accessible and things like that. Uh, that's why uh, we uh, come into picture like we need to do uh, the automated accessibility testing or auto um, accessibility testing. Uh, um, so next. Yeah, so there's a problem statement. So uh, there are some uh, RNIB concerns, like uh, what's RNIB is because I work in UK and I work for some UK customers um, uh, as part of like an, um, uh, from Cognizant. So RNIB is something like, uh, it's a Royal National Institute of Blind where they are kind of like providing an audit to uh, the websites and apps to give uh, audit on uh, the accessibility front and they will be kind of of like uh, giving you the scores to your websites they will giving you the suggestions and they will uh, tell what are all the bugs and what are all the issues that you have uh, in uh, in your websites that that happens kind of like uh, quite a while uh, so so if you think about this rnib uh, they discover the issues that says that uh, you are not following uh, these rules of wcag uh, that is like accessibility guidelines uh, from the uh, World Constantium. Uh, so uh, if you identify these issues earlier to your cycle of your development cycle, then uh, uh, the need for doing those extra uh, audit during the uh, um, RNIB is not required. And uh, uh, fixing the issues at the um, later stages kind of like can be identified in the earlier stage and we can fix those things actually. Uh, and validating the accessibility manually is kind of like a cumbersome because uh, let's say there is an uh, e-com website where you need to make sure accessibility guidelines and rules and uh, uh, every uh, types of there are different types of accessibility uh, stuff that we need to validate. If you want to validate everything on the, every page and every model that you're going to uh, develop in your website, it's it's going to be uh, really, really cumbersome. Let's take a simple example. Uh, if you take my project, it's completely like uh, under the uh, continuous integration uh, DevOps model, where uh, I myself is, I, I myself deploying my code uh, twice a day uh, at the minimum uh, to my customers. So in that case, uh, I have like um, 150 or 160 odd pages with different models and different error messages getting displayed in my website. So if I need to valid, if I need to validate accessibility for each and every page, every model, every uh, error message that I'm gonna display, every information that I'm gonna display uh, manually, it, 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 I don't think that I will be able to uh, release it twice a day. At least I will, I will. I will take kind of like only twice in a month because of doing all these validations and stuff like that manually. Uh, it, it's it's quite hard. And uh, moreover, you know, uh, as I've mentioned, like uh, the RNIB concerns, like when uh, RNIB says that these are all the issues we have identified in your website, can you please make sure these are not uh, uh, in your website? We need to fix it at the later stages, which is a bit costlier uh, rather than fixing it during the development, during the uh, 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 testing phase itself. And quality and efficiency is kind of like, I have mentioned about this uh, acts and rules, um, like, uh, if you are not giving your product accessible to your user, they can see your business and say that, okay, you are discriminating me. Um, and it, it's kind of like a, a threat to the business as well. Uh, so if we think about this uh, discrimination, uh, if I take only the UK as collectively, uh, more than 18% of the UK's population uh, they are kind of like differently abled and they are accessible users. Um, that means uh, you are not enabling your business to reach those 18% of uh, the customers. Uh, uh, that's, that's, that's huge. You are losing your business uh, as well if, if you are not uh, providing app or website um, in an accessible fashion. So... Uh, so what we did is like we were doing some uh, brainstorming and then we were coming up with an approach for this automated accessibility testing from face like like face by face. So because uh, uh, in the uh, fast agile um, development models and then in the fast uh, technology uh, growing world, we need to be fast as well. So um, this accessibility, we started validating right from the beginning of the software development itself. So when I say software development itself, so we ourselves have um, we, we develop using the um, uh, React 
and uh, uh, sometimes we use this uh, view on Next.js and stuff like that. So when we are using this React, we have this uh, uh, storybook, which we develop for the uh, components, like uh, each and every component that we develop in our website is kind of like uh, uh, will be out of this component library that is called storybook. So instead of validating the accessibility for those components in the later stages of testing or later stages of development, it, why don't we validate the accessibility of that particular component when we develop that component itself? When, when I say a component, a page is kind of like will have uh, a number of components. It might have text boxes, it might have buttons, it might have um, uh, select uh, drop downs, and it might have models, it, it might have pop ups and stuff like that. So uh, everything needs to be validated for this accessibility. Everything needs to be validated with the uh, guidelines that we uh, got for this accessibility rules. So why don't we validate everything right from the beginning? So that's why we started it from the uh, uh, storybook itself. So it's kind of like our shift left model where we validate things in the earlier to your development itself. So what happens here is like we in, we have incorporated uh, the axe, um, axe tool, which is kind of like, uh, which validates the accessibility of your component and stuff like um, um, uh, related to the accessibility. Um, uh, we paired with our developers and then we just injected this axe uh, tool make to make sure um kind of like uh, to validate all those accessibility on those uh, components and uh, uh, with the different uh, uh, with the different rules as well for example let's say uh, there are rules like wcag 2.1 2.2 or wcag uh, AA standards wcag AAA standard and stuff like that so we injected all those rules on the axe and then we have injected that testing to our storybook where you can validate the uh, accessibility of that components different guidelines and stuff like that that's on the uh on the storybook and if you think about uh the next level what we did is like we created a dashboard for every page and every model that we have in different state different um uh um visuals um to our uh web, the, to our whole website to, to do so, what we did is like, we actually use a uh, Grafana here to show our um, dashboard. What does this dashboard contains is like, uh, this dashboard would contain kind of like the score for each and every page or each, each and every page in a different state, each and every page that contains different models. So what does this score uh, means that this score is like uh, providing you uh, a score uh, for your web page on 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 basis of accessibility so let's say uh, 100 percent of the rule is followed in this particular page um um out of this 100 percent what is wh where do your page st stands and things like that so what is the benefit of this uh page is like this dashboard is like giving me an alert saying that hey boss in your particular website there is a page uh let's say x that is that is going down like it is going to uh amber uh, from amber to red and uh, that gives me an alert saying that i need to make sure that issues needs to be fixed then and there so to do so what we did is like um we have kind of like uh developed the solution using the site speed so site speed will run through my pages in different state and different models and and what it will do is like it will give me uh the score uh, with the help of uh, uh, the Google Lighthouse and as well as with the help of Axe. And uh, these codes are kind of like captured and we uh, uploaded or or kind of like pushed those things to Prometheus. And then from Prometheus, we are just displaying those uh, 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 scores in, uh, uh, in dashboards. So next is like, uh, uh, like, how are we kind of like, so these two, these two solutions that we have is like one is when we have the component being developed uh, and when it is ready for development. And the next solution on the dashboard is kind of like it giving you a holistic view of your website, whether, where do you stand on score perspective and stuff like that. So what, what should happen when a developer is developing uh, a code itself? Because every component needs to be kind of like uh, uh, combined to a website and we need to test it. So 
to to for that solution what we did is like we combined accessibility uh, along with our functional testing and uh, because uh, functional testing is something that we have uh, across the pages and across the uh, com um, the uh, big components that we develop so we have this uh, functional uh, the accessibility testing injected to the functional testing which validates the accessibility guidelines and rules uh, for your components and the pages that you develop during your development uh, uh, phase itself uh, and it will give you the feedbacks uh, uh, i let uh, uh, mr gajapati to uh, continue on the implementation how it runs in pipeline and stuff like that yeah thank you shakti uh, yeah so here we are using the uh, code set uh, js framework so this is end to end testing frameworks uh, along with the puppeter.js file and uh, here we are uh, injecting with the x code plugin so to evaluate the uh, accessibility violations uh, which includes uh, different pages and uh, pop ups and models and uh, here the thing is like uh, whenever the new feature or the requirement comes once the development is completed and the code is uh, uh, committed so the pipeline will uh, start so here we are using the ci cd jenkins pipeline so in this pipeline we have different stages uh, so then uh, it will execute the functional test cases then uh, automatically it will trigger the uh, accessibility testing so here uh, it will execute all the auto uh, um, uh, accessibility testing for different pages uh, which covers uh, pop-ups and models as well and if any uh, violations are identified or noticed uh, so then it will alert to the team so uh, yeah here these uh, violations are coming so we need to fix that one accordingly so in the uh, accessible i mean in this it will give the complete report in detail report uh, what is the uh, violation like uh, there are different uh, violations like uh, uh, like uh, critical serious uh, moderate or minor or uh, incomplete so all these uh, um, violation details will give uh, in the reports so based on the reports so um, the team will uh, fix accordingly uh, then it will push again to the uh, uh, commit and push the code into the pipeline so the pipeline will trigger again uh, again it will go into the different stages and it will trigger our uh, accessibility testing uh, again it will test all the fixed uh, uh, scenarios so then everything looks good then yeah here we are going for the production so the main agenda is like before going to the production so we are going to identify early stage itself so we'll notice all the uh, violations and we'll fix it accordingly and this one is like uh, um, even it will uh, trigger the pipeline for the uh, each and every feature branch or, or even it will uh, trigger the entire master branch so whatever the uh, it will cover all the master branch pipeline as well so uh, uh, that is the i mean the flow how it will execute and it will give the reports in the reports it will cover all the violation details and uh, in the reports itself it will give where to fix and uh, how to fix it will give the guidelines based on the guidelines so you can fix it uh, the specific uh, uh, auto, uh, accessibility issues and uh, yeah so next we are going to the uh, tech stack so here we are using the different uh, tools and technologies to cover the automated accessibility testing uh, one is like puppeter and uh, axe plugin and site speed and uh, lighthouse and there is a uh, for the uh, dashboard purpose we are using here grafana and for the reporting purpose, we are using the Allure reports. So it will give the in detail report to the uh, to the developer. Uh, I mean to the team. So uh, based on the reports, we can uh, fix it accordingly. Uh, yeah. Then uh, talking about the benefits. Uh, what is the benefits using this tool? Uh, this X tool for the. Uh, uh, accessibility uh, testing. So first of all, it is like a uh, um, open source tool. So uh, it's free of cost. So um, that is the one thing and uh, no manual uh, effort is required. So everything is automated here. So it will based on the uh, um, automated accessibility testing. So manual effort is uh, not required. And um, the main uh, in the reports uh, uh, automatically it will suggest which rule needs to apply for the uh, uh, for the failures or the violations it will give the in details and it will give the guidelines uh, what we have to fix in the reports and uh, it is uh, the cost savings like uh, up to like 1110 pounds k per annum so we can save uh, uh, 
the, we, we can save the cost for that uh, level. And um, and also like as uh, uh, Shakti told like RNIB, so it will identify 90% of the issues identified before uh, during the RNIB audit. So it will identify and uh, it will give the details before going to the production. And you can say like it will be executable uh, in the parallel, uh, it will support the parallel execution as well. Uh, and when you talk about the table here, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, here we are almost covering a uh, total 160 uh, pages, which covers uh, including the pop-up uh, pop models and uh, the total time required to validate manually, it's around like 800 minutes. Um, and uh, when you use the uh, this tool, automated accessibility testing, so manual effort is uh, zero here. And, uh, and approximately we can, uh, uh, every month like 30 uh, uh, number of tests we are running for uh, every month and uh, the total minutes we are saving uh, per the month is like uh, yeah so 50 pds uh, saved per the month yeah thank you and and i think uh, yeah <laughs> let's enter to a q and a session uh, i think yeah we have like eight more minutes for q and a and Yes, we have uh, close to eight minutes. So I will open up the floor, okay? We can unmute and uh, go with a question. Okay, rather uh, type in, in chat. So in meantime, uh, uh, Shakti and Vidyapati uh, have a question. Okay, uh, like, uh, let's say now if i have to uh, if i have to uh, take this idea and implement okay, this in the project okay yeah. what time would what time would uh, it would take for me consider me as a uh, as a person who, who has uh, no idea about uh, uh, any of these things so what should be my approach yeah so a uh, few things that we need to consider is like uh, you need to kind of like build up your knowledge on accessibility and what kind of like uh, um, what are the kind of accessibility that you're going to uh, support and what uh, kind of um, accessibility that is available, what are all the rules and stuff like that, that knowledge is uh, very much required. That's one. And second thing is like uh, implementing the solution is very, very easy uh, because uh, every uh, project for sure will have a functional test. You, as I have told, the third solution is on injecting the um, AX tests, accessibility tests to a functional test, which will be like very easy, which you, which can be implemented um, if if you have a, a good strong tech team, you can implement it in a day or a two um, to validate all these accessibility uh, stuffs. But if you want to think about this um, uh, uh, shift left on the storybook or if uh, or in the uh, dashboard stuff, uh, that needs a bit of time uh, to uh, bring in all your um, page setups um, using the stops and stuff like that, and then bring in all your um, um, all your DBs on on kind of like in the Prometheus way, and then implementing this Grafana. Uh, I would say this implementing this is uh, uh, quite easy to start with. Uh, your functional tests and uh, 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 slowly graduate gradually kind of like um, growing from that yeah yeah even non-technical guys also can easily uh, uh, learn and implement uh, this uh, tool and uh, work on it yeah okay so i think that is a question yes two questions um, coming in now yeah uh, do we have any live sample demo for this uh, uh to be specific like uh, i don't have a a prepared demo on this one uh, only the slides that that i have um uh, what i can do is like i can <laughs> i can if i can uh, i'll create some uh, samples and then i can upload to uh, some git somewhere and then uh, share it with these guys like surya or someone so that we can um, um, get shared from them and great work uh, what are some resources you suggest to get started with uh, uh, 11y um so we actually uh, because our, ours is like a micro development model, um, uh, it was quite easy uh, to implement along with the developments uh, 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 tech stacks itself because uh, we uh, majorly with uh, TypeScript and uh, JavaScript. And so uh, technically it's a node library. So it was very easy for us to play around with the node library with all those uh, accessibility related 
um, packages and stuff like that. So um, as, as Gaja has uh, explained about the tech stack, uh, that tech stack should be good uh, to start with yeah. and uh, validate all those things. Uh, uh, yeah, so it is um, uh, World Constantium on accessibility guidelines. They provide the guidelines saying that uh, um, if a page is uh, developed, it should have these guidelines. Let's let take an example. Have you ever seen an image with alt text saying that there will be an image if you, if you, if you kind of like hover, it will be saying that this is the alt text and stuff like that. Same way, we will have a few uh, tags uh, like um, attributes in HTML tags saying that uh, um, um, this button is for clickable button and this is for placing an order uh, kind of like that for, let's say if there is a blind user and they wanted to kind of like access your website, they will be kind of like going through your voiceovers or stuff like that um uh, until otherwise if you have not in uh, introduced some attributes to your html tags in your uh, uh, website it won't read out correctly uh, so this wcag guidelines will be kind of like um, validating those tags against these rules and they'll say these attributes are missing here can you please implement all these things kind of like that that's wcag We have one more question. Says, does it assess ADA guidelines too? Uh, that should be. I'm not sure of, on that. Um, uh, why Grafana okay. not permit you? So, uh, uh, are you able to set up warnings with Axe Core when it runs in C or does it fail with the build something else? Yeah. Yeah, so that's how we have uh, implemented as well. So uh, what happens is like um, um, the, the, the moment we get these failures out of this test, we get the Slack notifications and alerts saying that uh, uh, something got failed. You need to look into your pipeline. Can you please go and fix it? Um, that's how we developed. And why Grafana not Prometheus or Tableau or NetData or Kibana, the specific compatible analysis and yeah, that's right. Um, uh, uh, as I have mentioned, uh, I just go with the flow with my team. Like uh, my team is kind of like uh, very comfortable with Gra uh, uh, Grafana and those visual uh, stuffs. We do have Kibana and other um, uh, logging tools as well. But for the visualizing uh, as a dashboard on a daily basis, if you want to look into it, and then um, um, Grafana has its own um capability to uh, alert as well if the score goes down and goes up and stuff like that so we just go on with the uh, uh flow with my developers um we can implement these uh with other tools as well like uh, how you mentioned cool so how can we uh, uh link the functional testing with accessibility testing so uh when you do a functional testing so uh, accessibility testing so how this accessibility uh, 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 test happens is like uh, we uh, take your page handle and then we will provide it to you the uh, uh, any libraries that you use. Uh, for example, um, access available with AxCore for um, um, I think uh, for um, JavaScript and stuffs like that, uh, kind of Node.js libraries and stuff like that. And there is something called Axe Property for uh, property supporting uh, projects and stuffs like that. So uh, we provide the handle to that. Let's say there is a uh, there is a functional test which validates a pop-up. Uh, for example, if you are uh, less than 18 um, years of age, uh, we are, we will not sell any paracetamol tablets. We will be showing a pop-up. Let's let's imagine that's an example. So uh, you you do your functional test to validate that functionality. The moment that pop-up comes in, you just take the page handle and give it to Axe and uh, start analyzing the page uh, on the accessibility. And then you will be uh, updating saying that, okay, these are all the issues with this model, uh, with this page and kind of like that. I think I answered that, Nick. Yes, with that, yeah, we come to end of this talk and uh... Yeah, uh, Ronmai, I will uh, give it to you now. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for the opportunity and thanks for all those questions um, and suggestions and stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Really helpful. Yeah, we have thanking notes for you, Shakti and Gajapati. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.
I thank you, Sakti Kanan and Gajapati, for this great informative session.